Okay, well, it's never a bad time to clean or sharpen your tools, but beginning of May is a great time because quite soon we've got box clipping season. So um, let's have a look at how to keep things clean and keep them sharp. Got a pair of Nuwaki garden shears, which are in bad need of a clean anyway. I've got a thousand grit sharpening stone. I've got a cream mate and some camellia roll, which are really all you need to look after your tools. So first things first, we're gonna pop the uh, sharpening stone in the water, let that soak for a few minutes. And you see the bubbles rising out of the top, which is nice. And then while that's soaking, we shall look at cleaning the um, shears with a cream mate. So cream mate is basically a rubbery pumice stone and uh, you use it a bit like a rubber on your classroom exercise book and you get some water on it and you put in a bit of elbow grease and apply pressure and give it a good go like that. And very, very soon, you'll see everything comes off really quite quickly. That's a good way that. And the most important bits to clean are the inside edges of the blade because they're the two that go backwards and forwards in friction together. So you want to keep them as clean as you can but you can see that just 10 seconds of work there does all the stuff you need. And we do the same on the outside here. The outside is less important, but it's quite satisfying and quite fun to do it well. You want to grip hard. You really want to do this on the base, like a table beneath you, so you've got some pressure. And just be careful because hopefully your blades are sharp and if you slip, it can get a bit nasty. So be quite deliberate when you do this. So turn over, do the other side. These have actually got a bit of rust on them as well from over the winter. Um, and you can see how this just gets rid of that rust really quite easily. There we go. That's clean enough. Could always be cleaner, but that's clean enough to use, certainly. So that's the cream mate, which is a really useful bit of kit. So our thousand grit stone has had a couple of minutes soaking in the water and the bubbles will have stopped rising, which means that it's fully saturated, um, which is good. You click it out, nicely warmed water. And for a pair of shears like this, which has got a straight blade, you want to use the flat outside edge of the stone. Um, so you find a comfortable position, brace on the table or brace under your arm. Watch out for this blade. We're going to be sharpening this blade, but obviously watch out for this blade and the trick is and it is a trick it's to kind of knack this rather than a science is to get a nice smooth regular motion going use quite a lot of the stone in one go don't um don't use a short side of the stone have a good follow through there and it's quite a smooth action it's more of a polish than a grind providing your blade is in relatively good condition to start with. If your blades are nicked and chipped, then you need a rougher stone, but just to keep them sharp, if it's in good condition, this thousand grit stone is fine. Backwards and forwards, and the angle I'm doing it at is kind of the important bit. So if you look from head on like that, I'm just off the angle of the blade. If I was any flatter, I wouldn't actually be doing anything on the blade at all, but I'm at about that much, maybe 15 or 20 degrees off of the angle of the blade itself. So I've just got a little edge there. And then going backwards and forwards. And if the stone feels like it's starting to dry out, just dip her in water again for a second. And you want to concentrate the whole length of the blade. The easy bit to do is the middle because it feels more comfortable and it's, you don't have to think about it. The most important bit is the tip because you want that really, really sharp if you're box clipping and just taking out fine little tips at the end. And then obviously go down to this end as well. And this, if you do it every day, only takes 20 seconds. If you do it once a year, take a couple of minutes. It's the sort of thing that, you know, the more you do, the less of it you have to do. The advantage of doing it more often is it becomes, you get used to it and you get better at it and it becomes more natural. And it's the kind of thing you don't want to, it's a difficult one. You don't want to concentrate too much. You don't want to try too hard, but you do have to think about what you're doing and think about the point of it. So little and often tends to be the best way to do it. And when I'm box clipping, I do it every day. I give, give it a couple of minutes in the morning and maybe a couple of minutes if I stop for a break, I do give it another couple of minutes then. So, once you've done the outside, you then turn the shears over on the same blade, but on the inside. And what we want to do here is not sharpen it as such, but just give it a very fine inner bevel. 
So at quite a steep angle, more like sort of 45 degrees, so it's not nearly as shallow as the last one, something like that, once and quite firmly, go like that. And you can do it twice, do it two or three times if you want, but it's only once or twice, it's not constant sharpening. If you um, end up sharpening the inside of the blade, the same as the outside of the blade, so it's symmetrical, and you've done that to the other blade as well, you end up with a little hollow space in the middle, which is where you snag leaves, especially for box clipping, you end up catching leaves rather than cutting leaves. So it's important that the two sides that cut it against each other meet and are flush rather than have a great big space in between them. So although the outside is the bit that sharpens the blade, like that, it's the inside is the bit that actually makes the whole thing work. So that final bit at the end is as important as everything you do on the outside. And because these are shears, you then have to turn it over and do exactly the same thing on the other one, which I'll just do quietly now for a few minutes. I tend to go backwards and forwards on this sort of angle. Um, some people will just go backwards and forwards like that. Some people do a figure of eight thing. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. If you look closely, they're all actually achieving the same thing, which is just going backwards and forwards smoothly over the edge. But it's important to remember it's not grinding. You're not forcing too hard. If you force too hard, you just wear this out really quickly. Um, if you do this dry, you wear this out really quickly as well. So this needs to be wet. You can see this kind of um, clay sap coming off of that. Turn it over and then once or twice firmly about 45 degrees like that and then just tidies it off and that should be smooth and sharp enough to cut through leaves cleanly and nicely and well if you're if they're not sharp you end up tearing through leaves and um, that's ugly and it leaves a mess and you leave bits of half dead leaf hanging on and that can attract viruses and rot and things like that but what you want is a nice clean cut the whole way through simple as that. So once they are clean and sharp you then want to um, dry them and oil them. Um, we use camellia oil for this which is traditional Japanese oil for rust prevention. Um, it comes in a normal clear bottle but you can put it in a dispenser like this which is quite handy and you just put a light film over all the steel blades and all the shoulder and the other bit as well and it will stop it from rusting and it will lubricate and it will give good um, smooth movement over the blades like that and slap it on but don't um, have too much that it then runs and gets everywhere so I tend to put it on and then wipe it off afterwards just wipe off lightly with a cloth if you've got an oily rag handy that's perfect camellia oil is a little bit kinder than um, machining oil 3-in-1 oil WD-40 it will do the job okay but it's a little bit aggressive and abrasive on steel camellia oil is in, almost entirely natural. It's, it's from Camellia sinensis, the tea plant, um, from the seeds of that, with a teeny bit of paraffin in just to kind of bind it together. So it's a kinder um, oil. It's not food safe actually, it's just not the same oil that they use in um, some food or health care products, but it is the same base Camellia. Just like that. 